is Pokemon Masters, Bokey Potobi here, and I'm a guy who likes my secrets and easter eggs in video games, especially within the world of Pokemon. All year I've been visiting every single Pokemon region and discussing the easter eggs, secrets, and bits of trivia that I think are the most interesting. All of it harkening back to a series that I used to do every single week called Fact Fridays. This was a long, long time ago and I want to make that a staple for 2021. Combining these ideas to create Secret Saturdays, it's just like Pack Friday, except on a Saturday. And a little bit more secretive, I'm really blending together the secret Easter eggs and trivia and facts, just the things that I think are the most interesting in the world of Pokemon, and this time I'm doing it by type. Right, here we go then, 15 Easter egg secrets, bits of trivia that feel very cold. Starting off with number one, it is the holiday season, let's talk about Dillabur. Bird. Deli Bird, the delivery Pokemon. It's obviously incredibly festively themed, and a Deli Bird can be seen in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon in the Shady House. Yes, it's a shady building in Po Town filled with a nefarious team skull, but inside one of the chimneys, if you wait just long enough, you can see a Deli Bird drop down. A Deli Bird dropping down a chimney with a sack of presents. Which is weird, because you'd imagine Team Skull would be on the naughty list. Number two, speaking about Santa Claus, Santa Claus is canon within the world of Pokemon, specifically within the animated series. Santa Claus has been seen in both the Kanto and Johto arcs with a full arsenal of wintry themed Pokemon. He's got Jinx who helped him out at his workshop, he's got Lapras and of course Delibird. He has Stantler who helped him fly his sleigh, which makes a lot of sense, but back in the Kanto arc before Stantler existed, he used Rapidash instead, which seems a little bit contradictory given that, you know, he lives in the North Pole where there's loads of ice, just sort of feels like Rapidash would melt into the ice. Although I suppose it explains that this one can fly, so maybe it just hovers around the North Pole. Number three, also speaking of the animated series and special winter specials, in the 2001 Pikachu's Winter Vacation, there is a, a, an alternate form or variant of Snorlax, one of my favorite Pokemon, and it seems to be a snowman Snorlax. It's like an ice Snorlax. Snorlax can learn a bunch of ice type moves, but thus far we have not seen this Snorlax as a regional variant anywhere. Actually, it's very possible that this Snorlax is just appearing in Pikachu's dream as well, as the whole thing seems to be happening at at night from the point of view of Pikachu and other Pokemon. Number four, something I have discovered the hard way. When playing Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, you wanna be careful what time you set your clock to. This is because for a lot of the physical copies that are really old now, the internal battery might have run dry, and if that's the case, all of the clock-based events won't work. These include the events at Shoal Cave, which determines when the tide is coming in or leaving, and if you haven't set your clock to a very specific time, Snow Runt won't appear. If this is the case, the only way to then go ahead and complete your Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald Pokedex with Snowrun is either to reset the game and choose the correct time at Shoal Cave, or to trade the one Shadow Snowrun that you get in Pokemon Gale of Darkness. Number five, looking to Snowrun's evolution, Glalie, there is a very special Glalie that you can obtain in the Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire demo. I said that really strangely, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Glalie, of course, one of the new Pokemon to get a Mega Evolution and a Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. For some reason, it was paired up with Steelix because people who got that demo in Japan got a special Steelix that could Mega Evolve. And here in, in the Western world, certainly where I live in England, you got a Glalie. It's an interesting demo, this one. There were sort of news reports, I remember at the time, that the longer that you played the demo, if you revisited it every day, there would be new stuff that you could get in the game to send to your main copy of Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire. I did it again, Omega Ruby and Omega Ruby. Anyway, I played that demo day after day and I did get things like a nugget, for example, to send over to my main copy, but nothing past a certain point. Number six. Can you tell me which game Professor Willow first appeared in? No, it wasn't Pokemon Go. This is to say that Price, according to the Poker Gear and in-game dialogue, used to be a Pokemon professor, and it turns out his middle name is Willow. And given that Willow is a type of tree and all Pokemon professors are named after trees, it would stand to reason that he was the original Professor Willow. Whether he's the same Professor Willow from Pokemon Go, that's up for you to decide in the world of Pokemon theories. Number seven, weird new Pokedex entry for Galarian Manitan. This Pokemon's done a 180 and changed from a fire Pokemon to an ice Pokemon in the Gala region. Cool, how are we gonna explain this transformation of Daramaka and Daramanitan? Pokemon that literally people use their poop to keep themselves warm. How are we gonna explain that transformation to a snowman? 
Well, according to the Pokedex entry, its flame sack has atrophied and been replaced with an organ that produces ice. Which makes a lot of sense until you read Galarian Demanitan's Zen Mode form, which says that because the organ has atrophied, now the, it just spews fire everywhere, even causing itself to melt. Which is one, sounds like a terrible existence for the Darmanitan. But two, I thought that, that it got replaced with an ice organ, so again, this is one I might need to look into some more Pokemon biology and maybe do a Pokemon theory about. Again, this is one of the more trivia ones where it's just interesting to think about. Number eight, talking about Pokedex entries that infer a horrible existence for the Pokemon, I've been looking at Cubchoo. And I did a theory a long time ago because Cubchoo has two kind of Pokedex entries that seem to be in cycle with each other. In Pokemon White, it says its nose is always running. It sniffs the snot back up because the mucus provides the raw materials for its moves. In Pokemon Black, it says when it's not feeling well, its mucus gets watery and the power of its ice moves decrease. But in Black and White 2, it says that their snot is a parameter of health. And when healthy, their snot, snot is sticky and the power of their ice move increases. However, Cupchu as a whole seems to be a reference to the fact that when people get cold, they get a cold. They catch a cold and become ill. It may well be the case that Cupchu is stuck in a cycle where whenever it gets healthy, the power of its ice moves increase, but this causes its body temperature to drop as its ice moves become more powerful, thus causing it to get a cold, which means that it starts to get ill again. Which then, of course, causes its nose to become runnier, but then, according to its white Pokedex entry, its nose is always running and it sniffs the snot back up to provide power for its moves, which again then makes it stronger, making it healthier, but then when it gets healthier, it gets colder, so then it gets ill again. Poor Cub Chew. Number nine, and this is kind of a little theory I've touched on before as well, in the Alola region, people know Vulpix as another name. Kyo Kyo. This is really interesting to me because regional variation is kind of like a, a prelude to Pokemon that you might think would be related. Let's take, for example, Larvesta, Volcarona, Snom, and Frostmoth. These two evolutionary lines seem very similar, but entirely unrelated. But how much more different are they than really Vulpix and Ninetales and Alolan Vulpix and Ni Alolan Ninetales? This whole idea of Alolan Vulpix being known by another name might be a reference to the fact that these two evolutionary lines have really begun to diverge and be known as even different Pokemon, which is kind of what regional variation is all about. Number 10, a little quickfire one. You can have a Mr. Rhyme that reads that it's come from the Sinnoh region. This is because while Galarian Mr. Mime can only be caught in Gala currently, Mime Junior, which can evolve into Galarian Mr. Mime in the Gala region, can be found as far back as the Sinnoh games in Diamond and Pearl. And you can't do this with any other regional evolution because, for example, an Obstagoon can only evolve from a Galarian Zigzagoon, not one from, say, the Hoenn region. So, so yeah, Mr. Rhyme is pretty unique in this way. Number 11, it seemed odd to me as a bird keeper professionally. The Galarian Articuno doesn't retain the ice typing, instead it's flying and psychic, but it's still known as Articuno, and according to the Pokedex entry, that would be because it gazes at people and makes them freeze in place. This using its psychic powers, of course, but again, kind of like the whole Vulpix situation with Alolan and regular Vulpix, uh, this might be the case that Galarian Articuno and regular Articuno, where they begin to deviate is the either regular Articuno's ice powers began as psychic freezing people still, or maybe it's sort of the other way around where Galarian Articuno came after regular Articuno and its ice powers are what allow its psychic powers to be so solid. If that just, again, trivia, fun thing to think about. Totally said in the most coherent way possible. Number 12, the first ever Elite Four member is an ice type Elite Four member, and that is Lorelei. But of course, in the Johto region, Lorelei was swapped out for Will. And it's interesting that Lorelei is an ice specialist, and yet she uses a Slowbro in the Kanto games. And so too does Will, because he's a Psychic Specialist. And he also uses Jinx. Meaning that these two characters not only share a position on the Elite Four, not only do they share Pokemon, but also, depending on what cannons you're looking at, they share hair. Just something I've noticed. They share hair colors and they share hairstyles, which has led people to believe that the two might be related. Number 13, Lapras was originally depicted as having teeth, this especially in the pack art from the fossil set. 
It's just one of those artworks that seems to have adapted and changed over time, as now Lapras is never really depicted in this way and appears to be uh, a lot more of a gentle Pokemon. Number 14, similarly in Pokemon Gold and Silver, Sneasel's sprite art is entirely different to its official Ken Sugimori art, which is just which is just bizarre. And it was fixed in Pokemon Crystal. The sprite art was given the correct colors, but in, before that, it was it was just wrong. It's just a, a weird little quirk. Again, fun little fun little bits of trivia. Speaking of which, number 15, Crabominable, Crabominable, is the Pokemon with the most letters in its name, having 12 letters in its name. But I can't pronounce Pokemon names at the best of time, and Crabominable, Crabominable, Crabominable could just do with a few less letters in its name. Thank you. And a little bonus one, because why not? It's not really Ice Pokemon theme. I mean, kind of. When Mega Evolution started being released in X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they decided to make one of the Pokemon become kind of like a giant Christmas tree. And it wasn't Mega Abomber Snow, it was Mega Sceptile's tail. Again, just things that I think are interesting and cool. So happy holidays, everyone. And going into 2021, would you like to see me do this for every single type of Pokemon? It's just something I'm interested in doing. Again, secret Saturday, as I could see this happening sort of every other Saturday. Thank you all for watching. And of course, so high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon master. A huge thank you to anyone who has been supporting the channel this year, whether that's on Twitch, YouTube, or Patreon. And a massive thank you to the biggest Patreon of this month, JD Gottlich. Thank you and happy holidays, everyone.